Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Heed Army podcast live. Um, I know why you're tuning in. I know why we're here. Um, we're going to be speaking to a very special man indeed uh, in Gated Fans Eyes, uh, Mr. Gary Mills. We He's he's waiting to come on. Uh, we've just got to do a little bit of... Uh, of uh let's say just a few announcements beforehand we'd like to say a big thank you to the fearless and devotion podcast because they helped us get this uh in place and without them we wouldn't have been able to put, um interview together uh also as well you can message in throughout the show and uh, I'm, I'm expecting a lot of messages i can see now there is messages popping up on the screen um we will endeavor to read as many out as we can but we're going to let the conversation flow hopefully we'll hit some of those questions within the conversation and then we'll bring in uh the questions later on as well uh so please do that and also if you are new to the heat army podcast I can see there's lots of people uh tuning in it's absolutely fantastic if you are new please do like and subscribe share the show and hopefully we can reach more fans that uh sit in the stand on a match date and get them all talking about this but uh mickey uh we'll say we've, we've had a little chat with gary we're about to bring him in but uh are you excited for this one this special one, the real, <laughs> the special, real one. special one. Well, I'll tell you what, we're just going to play a little intro and then we'll be speaking to the man himself. Hello there, Gary. Welcome to the show. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much. No, it's a pleasure to be on. Um, We're not worthy. Uh, I'm the same as you. Hey, all, you all you beautiful people up there in Gateshead. Oh, I'll say Thank you. Need contact lenses back in, good, Davey. <laughs> he does, he does. Um, Gary, as I said, it's a pleasure to have you on. We've, we've wanted to do this ever since you were a manager. Um, we didn't get round to it when you were with the club, and uh, thankfully now uh, we're able to maybe look back at, at that Wembley moment without it hurting too much. It still hurts, but we can look back on it as a fantastic memory now. But um, just before we start off, of course, um, you were going to be at the, uh, the, uh, in the social club now for a second there. The, um, Holly Hill, is it Holly Hill? Hill. Holly Hill, yeah, there we go, right? For your book that is coming uh, out, oh, I've got a picture of it here. Yep. Uh, so there we go, and uh, obviously it got rearranged, but the new date is the 21st of November, I believe. It is, but it's not Holly Hill now, it's changed. Oh. It is oh. now uh, Gate Sigma Sonic Hall. Ah, right. So we'll push that. Uh, we'll get that out in on all the podcasts and the build up to that. So it should be. If you, would, if you would, please. Yeah, it was unfortunate. Uh, get your that... funny handshakes ready. <laughs> 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 Under the arm and between the legs. I'll be doing. I'll be doing them all. Um, <laughs> uh, Gary, obviously, you've got the book coming out. Um, and we want to talk to you about good down memory lane about your time at Gator as well, but. Um, Mickey's and myself have, have been listening to a couple of the podcasts that you've been on, and Mickey's got a couple of questions that haven't really been asked, and I, I'll let Mickey crack away with the, the first one. Well, thank you. Um, first one is, Gary, who did you support as a young kid, and who were you pretending to be in the schoolyard? Good good question. My Well, my, my dad was... Um, a player at Northampton Town all his all his career. Um, so obviously, when I was really young, he was still involved. Well, he was always involved right through his life, Northampton Town for the different ways, and certainly as a player. Um, and I sort of saw the back end of him playing the last few reserve games. Um, so Northampton then, but then um, Arsenal. Um, I, I fell in love with Arsenal, you know, and, and Arsenal were my my team. Um, but um, it's a it's a it's a funny one actually. I um, 
uh, when you used to go and play over the local park, you know, you used to play with your mates and you was always a, and they probably still do it now, I don't, I'm not sure, but um, you was all, always different players. Um, and um, Arsenal went from the, um, from the FA Cup final, Charlie George going on his back. Um, so every time I scored between the two jumpers, I used to jump on me back and <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was Charlie, I was Charlie George. Um, uh, and then, you know, which is um, unbelievable for me. He, he joined Forest, and I played up front with him. Uh, yeah. So it was just, just one of the, you know, one of the unbelievable dreams that happened to me uh, as a young, as a young player. Um, and that's why I called my book Young Millsy, really, because there was so much happened when I was young. It was, it, I, I couldn't take it all in. It was, it was all happening. It was incredible. Uh -huh. So what that, about your career with junior football and eventually getting signed with Forest? Yeah, just local, local village, um, local village team here. Then I played for a team called Long Buckby um, for five years until I was till I was um, sixteen. But I played. My dad managed those actually that Long Buckby men's team, and he put me in the side at fourteen. Um, but then, I, you know, I went to Forest at uh, 14 um, and played in the Central League for two years. Um, trained with the first team for two years when I used to go up in school holidays. Um, and um, I got bollocks and I got told like any other player from the manager. Uh, but he was, he was helping me grow up, you know, so uh, and it was just incredible. It must have been an amazing time because obviously I would imagine at that point that was when uh, Brian Clough arrived at Nottingham Forest as well. And then you were there, part of the club, seeing the rise and then ultimately with the European Cup. But I mean, what I mean, I probably you probably get asked a million times and probably get asked a million more times. What was Brian Clough like? <laughs> well, listen. Whatever you think, whatever you think he was like, he was. You know, he, he had he had everything about him. He was the nicest bloke. He was the most arrogant bloke. He was ignorant. He was he was sincere. He was uh, just everything. You know, and that that's that was what he was like. And, and day in day out, you didn't know which one you were going to get. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, I've I've done it, and I've seen, you know, your Shiltons and your your Andersons and your Francis and that hide in a room as he was walking down the corridor because they didn't know what that, they didn't know what reaction they was going to get from him. So I'm guessing uh, the TV interviews that was the real Brian Clough. It wasn't just all uh, Uh Listen, ab absolutely, and and you know when I when I do my talk. Um, in in three weeks' time, or when you know when it is now, um, I've got so many unbelievable and and you know I have to have people I have to have people at these things to say listen everything you're saying is true because people go no way that didn't happen no way that couldn't happen <laughs> and, and seriously they they all happened it it, um, it was it was it was incredible I I, I you know I went out there at fourteen and. Training with training with the, my first my first training session and, and, and I remember training with the first team and I couldn't believe how simple it was and how what things were happening you know um, just I'm, I'm not going to tell you everything because I'm, yeah, I'm going to be yeah. telling a lot on the on the thing but in, incredible incredible and, and it was the best upbringing I could have ever had. and a, sorry Davy there's a fine line between genius and madness isn't it that's what they say yeah. Yeah. Clubby fits that to, to a tee. Oh, listen, listen, <laughs> listen, absolute genius. You know, that's when you were asking me what he was like, I should have said genius because I, I, I say it all the time. Um, absolute genius. And you you was either his type of player or, or you wasn't, you know. And if you wasn't, then you didn't last long. It's hard not to have the romance of football and watching interviews with him and then... I was going to ask you about the the damned United as well. What, was have you seen that? Of course, but it, yeah. was it an accurate portrayal of the man in front of the camera? Because obviously, with behind the scenes, none of us really know. But was it a, a, an accurate one, or did it not do him justice? Yeah, I think it's a difficult one for me because 
you know, I, I knew him from Forest, you know, not the lead situation. Um, yeah. So there were certain things in there that I, I could see happening. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I knew, I know Nigel and his family, Nigel Clough and his family were, weren't happy with um, some of the things that were going on there that we portrayed how he was. Um, so I knew they weren't happy with, with some of the film. And so they can answer that a lot better than me. But certainly, you know, certainly the medals in the bins and all that. Oh, yeah. I, that, that Shooting is, medals, pots, pans. <laughs> I could see that happening. Ah, they, good. They, 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 they <laughs> and I know I've That's why we're on about obviously, uh, the, 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 uh, obviously played in the, the European Cup final and won against Kevin Keegan's Hamburg. Just, I've got the, the team up here. Um, just some amazing players that you played with, Peter Shilton, of course, Viv Anderson, um, John Robinson, Martin O'Neill. And but there was one name that I didn't realize he was involved at Nottingham Forest at all. It was uh, Jim Montgomery as well. I didn't realize he was part Jimmy, of it. Jimmy, Jimmy, what a man, what a man. Hey, can you, can you know? Oh, I know. So I was going to say something that I'm going to tell on the, on the night as well. Just yeah. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you look at the teams there, yeah, I'll put it back up that you've put there, um, and you look at the subs. Um, we've only got four, yeah, uh, and, and there's a reason for that. So that's 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 you know another story, another story I've got. Um, but Jim Montgomery uh, came down, um, and I was I used to live in um, in Diggs at the time when when Jim, because I was still only young, yeah. um, and Jim said to me, um, could you have could you have a word? see if I can stay in your digs for a few nights, you know, rather stay in hotels. I'd rather... So he actually stayed in the same same digs as, as myself and a lad called Colin Walsh, who, who played at Forest as well. And um, I just got on so well with, with Jim and he was, he was a great, he was a great, uh, great, great man. You know, he's in training. Um, he had this, he had this thing where, if he made, if he the ball went hit somebody, he used to rather say our ball. He used to shout their ball, their <laughs> ball, and, <laughs> and like he had this thing about you throw the ball out. He thought it was going one way, and it went the other. He was such a, such a lovely, lovely man that uh, integrated into into what we were. Um, so yeah, lovely, lovely. Yeah, and, and all I've got memories is that cup final of him. Yeah, you know, he, he was he was he was another one. I, I think I was twelve at the time, um, and watching him and and thinking that's in the back of the net and he's saved it and, and incredible. For, for any of the younger viewers, we mentioned Charlie George there as well. Go back on YouTube and just look at the goals. Um, just I mean the FA Cup goal, of course, is fantastic. But what what a strike! And of course, Jim Montgomery. I think everyone in office knows. But if you're of a younger persuasion, just have a look at that double save in the FA Cup final seventy three. It's uh, yeah, not, yeah, absolutely. Not say any better. I'm not say any uh, better. No, absolutely. And, uh, with no no gloves on either as well. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> amazing stuff. Here is sterner stuff. Yeah, and um, obviously, I mean, at the time you 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 in your team, you're coming up against you know Kevin Keegan, uh, who's Hamburg side. Of course, they were flying. What yeah. was that like? Be lining up against Kevin Keegan? Of course, I imagine it's someone like idolised growing up as well. Yeah, it was it was mainly what all the talk was about. You know, Kev, Kevin Keegan, and um, I mean they they were one of the top sides in 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 Europe then, uh, Hamburg. You know, and we they were favourites. Um, the 79 final that, that we were in, we were favourites against Malmo. Um, and obviously we won that one as well. Um, but the, the 1980, you know, Hamburg were, were favourites. You know, they had some good players. Um, you know, and again, it was backs, backs to the wall for, for 90 odd minutes for us. Uh, and we, we got the goal through John Robertson, um, who, by the way, was a, a genius. We talk about a genius manager, he was a genius player. Um, so yeah, you know, to be to be part of that, I think I think um, Burnsy sorted him out. Um, I think he ended up playing left back in the end. That Burnsy kicked him that many times. <laughs> Kevin Kevin Keegan ended up playing left back rather than up front. Yeah, um, any burn kick anybody? I don't believe you, Gary. <laughs> um, um, Headbutted a few times as well. Before we move on from your time at Nottingham Forest, um, Patrick Champions, but do you think Clough ever inspired your own style of management? Yeah, listen, without doubt, I'm not going to. I'm not going to lie. I think, yeah, you know, I think man management is is massive. Um, 
And one thing, one thing he got, and you look at that 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 side that won the two European Cups. The, the, there was players there that nobody wanted. There was players there coming to the end of their careers that he took them and 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 turned them into better players. And it's one thing that inspired me. I always, as a player, I always wanted the best out of myself, and and you know I worked hard at that. And, and what I don't get, I did what I didn't get when I played uh, football was in the dressing room when. I, I, I played with players that I never felt some of them got the best out of themselves and didn't mean enough or, or whatever. Uh -huh. And so that's what I, that's totally what I get when I manage now, well, not now, uh, the last 25 years, that I want to get the best out of players that don't don't see the best in themselves and don't believe in themselves. And, you know, I've got many a player back in, uh, well, not back, sorry, uh, many a player into the Football League uh, and some are still in there, you know, that are playing. And I get more satisfaction than that from anything. But I hate to see players, no matter what level. Um, and it was the same when I came to Gateshead, that get paid, and I know you say well, that shouldn't come into it, but get paid to do a beautiful job, but still don't want to get the best out of themselves. Um, but I made sure that happens, you know, that's what I do. And again, if a player doesn't, then I try and get him out the door as quick as possible. That's, that's the best way. We've got one more message on Brian Clough, and uh, we've got uh, what was Clough like in the dressing room after a defeat? <laughs> <laughs> Does the hair dryer come well, nowhere near? You know, you know, you know. This is the thing. You know, he, he was he was more uh, calmer after defeat than after we won a game. Um, and uh, seriously, it was, that's what I said at the start, you, you never knew what you was going to get. And, you know, if we if we lost a game or you knew personally you didn't have the best of games, say I didn't play particularly well, he'd come in and say, well played. Yeah. And that ball, son, that you played down the line was <laughs> unbelievable. Well played, son. And it meant the world. And then you'd come in having you knew yourself that you'd had a, a, a real good game. And next time you don't pass the ball. <laughs> and so like, he, he, knew, he knew when to pick fault and you went to praise in the right circumstances. Yeah, so you couldn't work him out. And that's that was the beauty of him, you know. And that, that was part of him being a genius. Um, yeah. Nobody ever got above the station. If ever they thought anybody was getting above the station, then... You know, it's it sort them out in different ways. Um, so as, as as much as people think that we lose a game, you know, and, and this was we'd lose on a Saturday, and he'd say, "Tell you what, lads, I'll see you on Wednesday. Have a nice few days off. See you on Wednesday." Um, and we used to have those days off, and then coming on a Wednesday, and that game would not be mentioned. Uh -huh. You know, and that's and that's how we work, genius. You know, I look at it now. The, the modern day manager, we've had a little chat, haven't we? Um, <laughs> the, mod, the modern day manager, you know, didn't play well. Get him in on Sunday morning and run him. Come on, what's all that about? Come yeah. on. You know, and, and he was genius. And genius again. I believe also, I think in the next couple of days, there's a documentary coming on to Netflix as well. Because I got quite excited the other day because I was going through Netflix and then all of a sudden I seen your face on my TV screen. I'm like, I'm interviewing him. <laughs> <My wife. laughs> um, but is it, I believe in miracles as well. I think that comes on the next week or two on Netflix. So if anyone wants to find out about Nottingham Forest, if you, you don't know yeah. what it was all about, um, I suggest you watch because uh, it's, I, I yeah. think I saw Mickey yesterday or the, this morning. It's something that will probably never be repeated. Um, no, 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 you know, I, I think we've been. We, I don't think we got the the, the, the praise or the, the what what we deserved. It, it was you know, I, I around, think... around. It was Liverpool, you know, and we beat mm -hmm. Liverpool. Look, we had we had two three years when Liverpool couldn't beat us. Yeah, any game, whether it was league game, league cup game. European Cup, you know, we, as you all know, first round we drew Liverpool. We thought we were going to Europe, and we drew Liverpool. Um, and you know, we knocked Liverpool out, and then and then we ended up in Europe. AEK went to Greece, Athens in the next round, and uh, yeah. that's when I, that's when I played against Athens at the age of sixteen in the European Cup. Um, 
you know, and, and I, so I still hold the record for, for the youngest to ever win the European Cup. Um, Fantastic. You know, when I played there. And, and so it, it's, it, it it was it was fantastic. Honestly, we 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 were just uh, an incredible bunch of lads and and a squad of sixteen, seventeen. You know, yeah. not four, 46, what they have now, or whatever. Sixteen, seventeen. And also as well, a majority of the players that came from the old second division to go through to become European Cup winners as well. Could it? Could you imagine someone taking over QPR tomorrow and taking them to European glory in three years' time with the same with majority of the same players? No, no. And sorry, I just got back because a lot of people, you know, even Sooness, and to be fair to him at Liverpool, said it's the greatest club achievement ever. No matter what we achieved at Liverpool, what Forest achieved uh, is the greatest because of, of who they were. And, and you know, so, so, so I'd say I joined Forest in 75 as a schoolboy and Cluffy joined in 75. Yeah. So it was, you know, the same. So you're all responsible, you're seeing. <laughs> yeah. it, 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 it wasn't cluffy um, <laughs> Gary Mills all along <laughs> um, we've got some more messages coming in and I, I, I don't want to leave me people's messages as so we've got a um, friend of the show comedian Gavin Webster who's got a show on next weekend at the um, Tyne Opera House it's still available um, he's, he's message here. he goes uh, did you play with Frank Clark Gary and uh, what was he like to work with uh, he was actually a gated fan as a kid apparently yeah, I played with Frank. I played yeah. with Frank. I, I see Frank all the time now. You know, he, he, it's amazing. A lot of people come to Nottingham and they settle in Nottingham, and you know, not many, not many go out. So, yeah, it was actually uh, against Athens that um, Frank got injured, and I came on for Frank. Um, so, you know, it was the sort of first year really that Frank, and then Frank sort of went out of the, out of the side and, and disappeared. But. Um, Frank was one of those, wasn't he, you know, that people thought his career was coming to an end and, and the gaffer got hold of him and, and you know, he's gone and won the European and Cup. If you look at his, his uh, achievements as well, at the Amateur FA Cup as well, he won, and then the Fairs Cup and then the, the European Cup. Uh, what, what, what a career. Um, and getting to play for a hometown club and then going on to have the, the yeah. European success is just, it's phenomenal. Yeah. It's another fairy tale story, isn't it? He's a nice, he's a nice, he's a nice bloke, Frank, you know, um, can moan at times, you know, he's a bit of a moaner, but the old, <laughs> the old gouger, as everybody used to call him. Um, but he, um, you know, and then he got Forrest, Forrest promoted back into the Premier yeah. League. So as, as he went in there as manager and then uh, he was chairman for a time. Um He's been ambassador there. So, like I say, I bump into him quite a bit. And, you know, he's a lovely, lovely man. And uh, we've got a message from Dave Allen. He's put, good evening, Gary. Are you still a big Quo fan? I used to go and see them at the arena every year. Uh, and um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the Quo. I mean, Mrs. Hates the Quo. I should say, yeah. it throws me off saying Mrs. My wife, my lovely wife. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know she watches every week, so we'll, we'll, we'll be she, she, like, she doesn't like Quo, so... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I like it. I like that. So I like 70s. She hates 70s, but I love 70s music. Yeah, um, we've got a lot of messages that are going to tie into things that we're going to talk about a little bit later on. We're just going to play an advert from our sponsors and how to uh, subscribe to the show. So please um, do that. And when we come back, keep sending your messages for Gary, and we'll be back just after this. Hello everybody, remember to like and subscribe and share the show. And I can categorically say that the best just being behaved in a long time when we recorded <laughs> um, <laughs> um, okay. Gary, um, we've got a lot of messages coming on about um, when you came in to Gateshead. Um, of course, there was the managerial um, dismissal in Anne Smith, who managed to keep us up the season before, but it didn't work out at the beginning of the, uh, the 13 14 season. And how did the job come onto your radar uh, that year? Mr. Graham Wood, simple as that, you know. Um, it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen very often, um, but um, I got a phone call to say would I meet him at junction 24 of the M1. He was driving back up from London 
Um, that's probably 20 minutes from where I live. Um, and I agreed to meet him. Um, and his first words basically to me were, I want you to come and be my manager at Gateshead Football Club. I don't want anybody else. I've had applicants, I've had phone calls, but I want you, uh, will you come? Um, and even now, I send shivers down my spine because that, that doesn't happen happen very often. He says, I've, I've followed your career and, you know, you don't know what people follow your career and what you do. Uh, obviously, as a chairman, you know, they're always sort of looking, who they think are, are managers to come and manage their club. Um, so that, that meant everything. So that's that's the reason I uh, I came to Gateshead. Yeah, and um, obviously, you came in, the, the, the form wasn't great at the time. Everyone kind of knew there was a, a decent side there. Um, I think they arrived, John Oster just arrived before you came as well, didn't he? No, but, I signed him. I signed him. Sorry, yeah, that's my, getting the timelines mixed up. But John came in and um, I don't think he was fully fit at the time. Was It took him a few games to settle in. And then once John started to start motoring and the team got a bit of confidence, it was really, it, you could see early signs of it before we got that form. Yeah, uh, the most pleasing thing for me um, was my first training session. I, I know I take a lot from my first training session. And, and again, my, my sessions are very basic. They're, they're enjoyable. Um, I try and make them enjoyable. But I, I make them in and, and train in a way that I, I, I know I can see what players uh, are about. Um, and um, to myself and, and to nobody else, it was like, Wow, I've got some players here, you know, but they just don't know it. They don't know how good they can be, and you know, um, as as a team, and and you know, the players might say different, but you know, in my opinion, um, they didn't believe in in themselves. Um, I don't think they realised just what they could go and achieve. Um, I knew why I was at Gateshead Football Club. The chairman, the chairman had made that very, very, very clear. Um, so there's only one thing I wanted to to achieve, um, and I wanted to get the best out of myself. A, a club that nobody gave a chance of of, of going into the football league. Um, so I I worked hard at that um, as you do, uh, and I wanted the players that were going to play for me to work just as hard. Um, and I don't mean just physically, I mean, I mean mentally. Um, and I, I, although physically I got them fitter, um, I got them so more mentally fit. It was, it was frightening. Um, the response. Just, to, just to go through some names in that team, uh, obviously the goalkeeper, I don't think we've ever had a goalkeeper since or before that was so comfortable with the ball at his feet. And that really... You know, it lent itself to the style of play that you want to do as well, didn't it, with Adam? Yeah, you know, it, it helps. There's no, there's, there's no two ways about that. Um, so yeah, um, you know, exactly what you're saying there. You know, very early on, I had to decide. You know, can we can we play from the keeper? Is he capable of playing playing um, out from the back? Um, he'll tell he'll tell you. You know, and this was whether it was good management or, or whatever. But you know, I used to say to him, "Listen, I want you to play out from the back, but you know, don't take risks. If it's got to go seventy yards, it, you know, it goes it goes seventy yards. I don't want you coming in at the end of the game going, but Gaffer, you told me to play out from the back. I said, yeah, it's not my fault if the team score and you try to play out from the back. It's your fault because you've made the wrong decision. So." Um, so he knew, you know, he knew, and um, uh, he's certainly done well for me. And um, so he's doing fantastic work at Newcastle as a coach now, Adam. We've had him on a few times, uh, lovely lad. But just uh, another couple of players, there's a few players I want to mention because obviously it was um, every one of them we could go through and talk for 15 20 minutes each. But the central pairing of James Curtis and Ben Clark, um. Uh, I, I don't think there was a better pair in, in the National League for about six years when them two were playing together. Yeah, and, and, and you know, yeah, I, I want to be, again, careful what I'm saying because I, there's so much I want to say that when I come yeah. up in, in three weeks' time. But, 
um, I think they they done all the talking, you know, and exactly what you're exactly what you're saying there. So I'm going to be saying a lot about them, you know, when I come up in in three weeks' time. Um, you know, we had a, we had a great time. We had a we had a we had a great time doing what we were doing. Um, it took it took it took a while for them to realise who I was, what I was, and and you know that I was a man that they could trust. Um, and when they when they certainly realised that, then there was no there was no looking back. Um, you know, but it works the other way. It works the other way. You know, I had to trust them. Um, but I know I keep saying it, and 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 they, you know, I was I was up in at um, come up at the weekend, Newcastle Gate said to meet my chairman. Um, even though it was off, there was no way I was not going up. Um, yeah. So I had a I had a great weekend. You asked, you know, special people, seriously, special people, and and um, you got that grit about you know you got some grit about you and and um, hearts about you uh, that my players had um, because you know virtually every one of them from that area. Um, and 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 it was and it was lovely, and I was learning that, you know, I was learning that. It was um, no, it was great. It was yeah. great. Don't get don't get me going because I'm going to say too much. Though. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I want to ask you a question before. Give it, was Philly Turnbull the blue-eyed boy? Who my blue-eyed boy? Aye. What do you mean? Aye. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> You he can't to, even you answer can't, it, so you know the you're, answer. You're, you're, you're coming on the 21st, aren't you? Find out. <laughs> we'll find out. Um, obviously, Gary, you came in, you worked with the players like you mentioned there, and um, I think the first glimpse that we got, we had something special, was in the FA Cup when we got to the first round. And I've just got the highlight in the background here down at Oxford. Um, over the course of the two games, maybe we, we should have won it. Um, I think they even had the game rearranged due to, I think it's uh, bad weather, wasn't it? And they had lots of players out. We had a great chance to get through. But down there, we, we held our own against a, a very good Oxford side. Uh, listen, Oxford were flying at the time. Um, and I, um, it, it's a game that will always stick with me for a lot of reasons. Um, preparation, which I'll talk about when I come up. Um, you know, and 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 what and what we were about, and 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 yeah, it's a game we should have won. Oh, that was so that was so disappointing. And I don't just mean at, at uh, Oxford when we went two up. I mean back at our at, at our place. You know, we played so well that night uh, again, and um, it was a penalty that they got that that knocked us out. But um, listen. You know, yes, we'd have loved to. Have, we'd love to have got through. But for me personally, it was. It was. You know, just them telling me we can go places here. Yeah. Watching them play that. You know, it was. It, yes, of course. It's people say it's about the result, but I had to. It was early on, and I had to look at that performance, um, and I had to look at my players. Oh, we were good. We were better than good. We were. We were. We were. In, we were incredible. Um, so I was so I was so proud of them. Um, I think just in the end, the fitness the fitness told on us in that in that game at Oxford. Um, you know, so I had to work on the the players' fitness more. We did get fitter. We got a lot fitter. Um, and uh, yeah, it was it was unfortunate for us that day. Unfortunate. Yeah. Well, we've got a surprise guest, and someone will be able to tell us if he actually did get fitter. And that's Phil Turnbull. How are you doing, Phil? I'm good, thank you. Are you all right? How are you, Phil? How are you, Gaffney? You all right? How's them blue eyes? No, I have a good eye. Blue as ever. <laughs> uh, Phil, thank you for joining us. Um, you're a, 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 you know, a big part of the club for many, many years. You, you're well established at the club when Gary arrived. And just what was the impact when Gary came in? Uh, I mean, I know we, we can all look back on it, but from a player uh, having Gary arrive, what was it, what was it like? Well, I, I'd see, you know, when you watch the Prem and things like that and people get sat and the manager comes in and you think, can one person have that much of an impact? And I, I probably was a bit of a doubter before the gaffer came into Gateshead, but it, it was like a flick of a switch. It was it was unbelievable. And I, I mean, I've been tuned in there for half an hour and what he's saying about, he, we probably thought we were decent players, 
but he came in and made you feel a million dollars and it was unbelievable the thing that always stuck out for me the most i remember with, with ant smith would would always concentrate quite a lot on the opposition and then when the you know when you switch the um, team sheets before the game and things like that and the lads would often ask oh can i have a look at the team sheet who's playing and, and i can't remember who it was but someone asked the gaffer and said um oh gaffer you got their team sheet and i, and I don't know if you remember or not but you, you got the team sheet ripped it into about 20 pieces and flung it like that and he said i don't care about the opposition if we if we play the way i know we can we'll beat anybody and it was one of them moments where you just go, "Whoa, oh, we're we're going to be all right, yeah. We're going to be all right." And it and it was it was it was literally like the flick of a switch. Yeah, <laughs> he's loving this. <laughs> yes, he's loving this. He's going to come on listen, every. Listen, it, it's I, I I like I said I knew I had good players in that dressing room, but they just didn't know how good they were or how good they could be. Um, and it's about the team and and, and the squad and. You know, um, but and, and and getting there, and, and and it's not just about what happens on the field; it's what we do off the field and, and what we do together. And uh, if we do something, we all do it, um, and we all grow into it. And if someone doesn't want to be part of that, then they don't they don't stay with my my team of players. And um, so we had a, we had a great time getting to where we where we where we got to, and and. Um, yeah, I just manage how I manage, and, and but I, I I do it in in a, in a way that you know every player has got to get the best out of themselves to play for me, um, and I think I think that virtually everyone done that, you know, um, and just devastated how it how it how it finished for us, and, and you know particularly Phil, you know, there's no we we get on great, me and Phil, you know, I I love him to death, and I've always. I, I said to him when I left, you know, if I had to put a team together, he'd be in it. Yeah. Um, uh, because I saw, I saw a man that was so comfortable on on the ball. I, I we had a um, no. I'm not going to tell X. I'm going to tell it when I come up. Phil. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to jump in the timeline here, just to the season after Wembley, um, when we had the FA Cup run, and for the first forty minutes against West Brom, um, we were outplaying them. We've had the new manager worried um, when he had to come down the stand and get on the touchline for his first game there. There he is, Tony Pulis. And you mentioned about the, the gift of players that you had in this game. We showed that, didn't we, for the first half? Listen, it, uh, incredible. I, I stood there and it was like, go on, lads, go on. We were playing how we could play, with confidence, no fear. Um, you know, even though it was West Brom, Phil will tell you, the team sheet was ripped up. It, it was it was about us, you know. We didn't talk about West Brom and how they were gonna. I think if I had, they'd probably been been a bit worried. But um, it, it, it it's how we worked. It's how I work. It's how the players grew into. The players didn't want to know. The players, all the players wanted to hear was what they their jobs were, uh, which they knew anyway. And um, just a little thing from me. Go on. Go and do it again because you've been you've been outstanding and and for forty minutes to go in two goals down at half time was devastating for because I think they gave a free kick I think it was the first one there was never a free kick um, so I you know give the referee a little bit going back up the tunnel uh, because I was I was just disappointed for my players um, yeah. because they didn't they didn't deserve that and they certainly didn't deserve you know the the, the final score. Um, I think I think that going in two 0 just knocked us back a little bit because we didn't deserve that. But um, you know, Tony, Tony Pulis coming me dugout and it, it was like six, um, and he said, "Listen, Gary, your players have been outstanding." I says, "Yeah, I, they have, Tony. I know." And he says, "You don't deserve to be seven down." And I said, "Well, listen, you're not that good. It's only six. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and he's and as I said that they scored again. I said, "Oh, hold on a minute. You, you might, be, you might be that guy. You might." I, be that guy. I think I was probably one of the only Gated fans that wasn't able to travel down. I and mean, my mum was ill at the time, and I watched it on a legal stream. Um, it was shown live in America, and um, I can't remember if it was Fox Sports or ESPN. They were ranting and raving about Gated at half time on their things, and it was just a real surreal moment that. 
the main channel in America for sports was shown Gateshead uh, for a start, but picking us up so much that they couldn't believe that we were two 0 down at half time, and it was just a. Uh, I think one of the, one of the most moment. beautiful things was I come down the tunnel and I looked to the right and our fans that day, Phil. Um, oh, the amount of fans we took there that day and, and and things like that are just so 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 special, you know, so special. Uh, I was gutted for them, obviously, but they knew. Are they? They that listen. I think that first forty minutes was worth the entry fee for them and making the journey down. Um, forget 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 the result, you know. Um, yeah. It uh, it was about us and, and what we were as a club, and that's where we'd grown to. You know, we'd we'd grown that the amount of fans at that game that day, and how we passed it um, around West Brom. And, and like I said, Chip, Tony Pulis had to come down because I don't, if he hadn't, I think um, you know it wouldn't have, have, have gone out of the game. He, he did turn things around by coming down. To be fair, to be fair to him. Yeah, it's, um, but I think, but Phil, what, what were your memories of that day? Obviously. You're out there. The, do you know the scary thing is we went to that game and once again this is this is the way the gaffer made you feel. I, I personally I went out onto that pitch thinking I'm gonna be the best player today. And you played against Premier League players, and I think that's how all the lads felt. Every game we went into, we felt we we're gonna win. And when you've got that mentality, nine times out of ten, you generally do. Um as you've covered there for 40 minutes. I'm not exaggerating. On the pitch, we battered them, and you can feel it as a player. We absolutely were in charge of the game, possession-wise, we're creating chances. But then, I mean, they scored a goal, and it's always going to be difficult. They've got a big crowd there and things like that. So it was always going to be tough, especially 2-0. But you went in at half-time thinking, how are we 2-0 down here when we've been so dominant in the game? But one thing I'll say as well about the crowd, I remember like 7-0 down at any level, you're a bit... You're a bit embarrassed, aren't you? But the fans, even at 90 minutes, were singing still, still singing for when it was. Oh, we've got a message here from Anne Schofield. It was a the army chant. Uh, I think there's videos of it online still. The fans just uh, continuously singing, which is, uh, I'd say, it, you, can, you can forget the score line, the, the memories of the day, the performance. They can't take that away from us. And that's the, the magic of the FA Cup, isn't it? No, oh, it was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It certainly was. Well, Phil, thank you very much for talking to us. We're going, we're going to carry on going down memory lane with uh, with Gary, but uh, it's always a pleasure to have you on, and uh, all the best for our, the rest of the season with Dunstan. I see you're up into the playoffs now. Yeah, uh, they are thereabouts. Brilliant. Great to see you, Gaffer. I'll hopefully catch up with you soon. Take care, mate. You lost Top some man. weight. You lost some weight. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody flew in a vet because them swans are sick. Right. <laughs> Cheers, yeah, cheers, lads. Bye. Take care. There we go. A lovely surprise guest for us there. The blue eyed boy. We thought we'd bring him in. Um, so, uh, so, if you want to keep your messages coming in, we, we have been putting a few up um, throughout there. Uh, we've been doing there. But um, obviously, we're going to continue with the, the, the Wembley season. The, the, um, obviously, after the FA Cup run and momentum start to build. And I think. Uh, I think it's been said a lot of times and by a lot of people that the Barnet game was when people were really started to believe when we got a result down there. And was that a, a big moment for you in the dressing room when, when we got that result? Yeah, massive. Um, I sat with Darren Caskey um, and I'm not one that sits down and, you know, says we've got to get that amount of points in these next six games and we've got to do this. I'm, I'm, um, you know, one of those, it's the old cliche, but, you know, each game. But for the first time, um, I said, Cass, have a look at this, you know. Um, and I showed, I showed him something and, and, you know, I said, this is what I want. Uh, and, we, and we went and got it. And again, I'm not going to go right into it because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be saying it all in a couple of weeks. But, um, yeah, that Barnet, that Barnet one and, and you know, I, when a lad called Chandler can go and head a ball in the back of the net, then I think we all thought we've got a chance here. If he can, if he can, if he can head a ball in the back of the net and we win the game one 0 then we've got a chance of anything. Um, now, but joking apart, it, it, it's it, it, it was a great result for us that set us on that run. Um, mm. But that run just didn't happen. Um, you know, it was it was it was the way that we done it. Um, and you know, some people possibly won't believe it when I tell them um, in a couple of weeks how we how we started that. 
yeah. and, how we, and how we went about that. Um, but we did, but we did. Um, and, you know, it still hurts me. That I mean, It still hurts me. It still hurts me because for a lot of reasons, um, you know, I'd still be up there, I believe, uh, managing. Um, so it's one game that sort of can di- dictate, you know, where your life goes, really. Yeah. Uh, and what and what happens. Um, but, you know, it was un- unfortunate for us that it didn't just quite happen. And so, but what I see... I'll, I'll put it up in the background. We'll try and look at it. Obviously, there's a fantastic goal from Jack Lester and, you know, beautiful scenes from it. But on the day, we maybe... Uh, didn't start the quickest but the end of the game it was just all gated wasn't it and uh, the chances we created it looked like it was going to come off and it was just uh, just a a goal too far for us wasn't it on on the on the on the day yeah we had we had um a couple of chances i think big 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 james he he had a he had a chance to to equalize for us um and, and we were pushing them back and and yeah we just couldn't quite couldn't quite do it. Um, yeah, right. Why'd you have to show me that? Come on. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can I come in there? <laughs> yes, I thought you'd show me Jack. And listen, I was pleased, pleased for Jack. We pushed, pushed, pushed Jack on with with Hatchy, and it did change it. You know, it was better. Uh, but you know, it's, that's not to say it would have been if it was at the start. But um, you know, we. I'm not looking at the screen. I'm talking. I'm looking at you while that's going on. <laughs> Um, God, it must be painful, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, is pain, it, it is painful because uh, it's not just that. It is game. for me. I must admit, it's not, it's not yeah. just that game. You know, it, it's it's how we got there. It's how we got there. The journey, the journey we went on to get there, and, and um, you know, it's um, heartbreaking. I'm just I'm no low looking at the beautiful fans there. You know, cheering, <laughs> cheering, cheering Jack, and you know, to Jack to come. Even Jack made a difference when he come in and. And, and for him, that was the, his last ever competitive game. So, you know, for him to score at Wembley is great for him. Um, yeah. But, you know, I just feel now, even now, I want to apologise to the fans because we, we should have apologise. No, I mean, I, seriously, because we, we should have done it. Mm-hmm. We should have done it. And, and um, so that, that will hurt me for, till, uh, till my dying day, I've got to say, you know. Um, I loved every second of the journey. Um, but when you when you get there... I've been to Wembley ten times in my career for different reasons, playing and managing. You've got to win. You've got you've you've got to win. Um, I but, must have, I was, listen, I'm not going to get, gonna get morbid. It was a beautiful season. Yeah. So. Uh, was, I, I, just one thing I want to ask you, Gary. Hindsight's a wonderful thing. Now, Marcus Madison was walking on edge eggshells in that first half. JJ come on and done excellent. I thought in the second half was that a could you brought? Did you think of bringing JJ on on earlier, earlier, or not? Uh, yes, yes. Me and Cass, me and Cass talked about it. Um, but you know, they're big decisions. You have to, you, you know, like say on site after and and. I, I, I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've thought about so many different things. You know, I thought I know what Wembley's like. Um, and it can do strange things to you. Um, and, you know, some youngish players, um, and I spoke to Cask, do we, do we start Jack and do we start Hatchie? Um, who, who wouldn't be phased, phased by the, the occasion. And um, I, I, I made a couple of decisions at York a couple of years earlier, the same situation, and I, and I went with the with my gut feeling. Um, but we then players had done so well, and, and I was confident that they could go and repeat that at, at Wembley. But there was always that talk of uh, and, and little not doubt, but in in my head, because I've got to do that as manager. I've got to question myself, you know, about who I play and who I don't. So I often I often think. Should I have started Jack and, and Hatchie up there? Um, but like you say, I didn't. So, um, yeah, I remember I think I, I 
lucky enough to get a little interview with you for the podcast when we used to do it as an audio one just before a few days before we went to Wembley and you said to us afterwards just enjoy the day just enjoy it and I, I thought of those words all the way down and then when I got to Wembley I was an emotional wreck I was crying uh, I was crying afterwards as well but yeah. I, I, literally going into that stadium, I couldn't have envisaged doing it as a player because my emotions as a fan were just shot. And uh, d- d- I mean, I, you've been there so many times. Have you ever had a, a I don't want to name names, but a teammate or a player that you've had to just tell them to calm down and, and, and you know enjoy it? Because the occasion can get you. It got to me. It, it, it can. It, it, it can and it does. It can and it does. You know, it, it, it's... It's everything about it. And, and the most unbelievable thing about um, about playing at Wembley, it goes that quick. The 90 minutes goes that quick. It is, is incredible. I've never known a game. It's almost like the game's half an hour. It, it, it really does fly by. Um, and um, I, I, I stood there... Um, but you know, you know, even at two 0 down, you know, um, because I knew that squad of players that I'd got there, um, I knew there was always a chance, um, you know. And, and Jack got us that goal, and that's what Jack's done all his all his career. And, and you know, even then we were. Oh, I can remember Phil, you know, my blue eyed mate, getting on the getting on the ball that many times the last ten minutes of that game. Um, Halfway in their half, um, and it was just, can we break them down? Can we break them down? And we had a couple of half chances to, to do it, but we didn't. Um, and, and he was one, I've said to you, you know, players have gone in, in the Football League that have played for me, and there was players there I wanted to get into the Football League because some of them would have played for me in that in, in the Football League. There's no there's no two ways about that. Um, uh, but one of, the, one of the most... Beautiful. Forget Wembley for a second. One of the most beautiful things was that Grimsby game, eight yeah. thousand whatever it was. I couldn't get highlights for that, unfortunately. I was hoping to have that to play in the background, but that was a, an amazing. Well, I've got, I've got, I've got a CD of that, and, and I play that every so often um, because that is what we created. That's what we were about. We were. Not, when I say we, I, I mean you, the fans, the everybody. I don't just mean me and the players. Um, every every one of us, um, yourselves, we were in it together, and, and no one was going to beat Gateshead. No, no one. You know, you know that, and you have a, a feeling in football. Every side it doesn't happen very often. Every game, every game as a manager, uh, I felt we were going to go and win it. Every game, every game, and and I I, I believe that. And I think my players thought that as well, um, and and you know that uh, the back the back the back end of it the back end of it was so it was so important. Um, we mentioned about turning points in the season and, and players as well grabbing it by the scruff of neck and taking their chance. We've got a, a question here from Andy Mason about uh, Marcus Madison. So, Gary, what was your first opinions of Marcus Madison? Because if ever there was a, a career saved by a manager, surely this was it. Because uh, it's fair to say that he was not playing to his potential. He wasn't doing himself um, justice. We know what he went on to do. Uh, fantastic career. But um, was that frustrating to see a player of such talent maybe not reaching it? Again, I'll tell you in two weeks what my first thoughts of Marcus Madison were. So there you go. Get yourself <laughs> along. November 21st. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, I've heard a story about how he turned up. <laughs> um, Listen, um, um, he, he's playing in our league now. Do you know that? Yeah, I know. But, um, obviously, seen what happened at the beginning of the season. I know throughout his career, he's, um, he's had a lot of uh, social media interactions with fans, and um, obviously, it's it's got on top of him, and he just wants to be happy and playing. Yeah, bless, bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Yeah. All I can say is he listened to me and. Um, you know, we went on and we got uh, we we got the the move. Um, we got the move for him that that he craved in the end. You know, to get into the football league. And you know, my chairman said to me, "I don't want to sell him." Yeah. So, you know, he's, he's. But there comes a thing where you know 
Um, you, you cannot, you cannot not let him go and play. play. I mean, he made it all the way to the championship and scored goals in the championship, and I, I believe he probably could have went higher. And um, you know, yeah. what was it for four seasons in a row? He was the top assist in the football league, right across. So and scoring goals as well. So he's, he's had a yeah. very good professional career. Listen, we got we 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 we've done well financially. We, we we you know for him. Yeah. Um, and that's that's another beautiful thing about my chairman. Um, I'm not bothered going, you know, I want him to stay. Um, yeah. You don't have to sell him. You don't have to sell him. And, you know, there's not many chairmen like the one I've got would, would say that. Um, but I didn't listen to him, did I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we've, got, we've got another message here about um, a player as well, a, very, a, a key player as well towards the back end of that season. Um, Lewis Wilkins has put, when... Uh, when you first looked at Gateshead, uh, did you think that J.J. O'Donnell would want to establish himself at the club for as long as he has? Obviously, he just left last season, um, the back end of last season. But did, did you see him going on to be uh, Gateshead uh, stalwart the way he has, was? No, because some of us don't like coming up, do they? You know, they don't, they don't like it. I can't get rid of him now. I think it's, he's just on the street from me. Well, it's, it's, it's grim up north, don't they? You know, they're like... Yeah. Um, but he, he's, you know, he played against us. Um, and I said, I, I, I've got this habit. I elbow my assistants and casket all bruises on him. I went, we, sign, we need to sign him. We need him. We need someone like him. Yeah. Um, and, and we got him, you know, and what a lovely, lovely lad. Um, but what I, what I do love is when I do sign somebody that they, they, they're at the football club for that long and, and give great service. Um, and I love signing players that do that. Um, it, it means a lot. I was talking about him at the weekend when I was back up um, in, in Gateshead, Newcastle at, at the weekend. We was talking about him. Um, so it'd be nice to hopefully he'll come along on the on the on the twenty first. Um, be you know, I, I, most of my players do because I haven't I haven't seen them for for, for a while, and it, it, it'll be lovely to to get back with them. But JJ. You know, he'd done well for me. Then he had that horrific injury that didn't know whether he was going to be able to play again. And and, yeah. and and again, you know, someone like him, a lot of players would have have let it go and think, well, it's not going to happen. And, and he fought and got back. And so I'm, if he's listening, I'm proud of you, mate. You know, I'm proud I mean, of you. I mean obviously, he's, he's scoring goals at the enemy now, but with Blythe, which is, you know, good. It's just good for him, not for us. But um, if, when he got back from his injury, he became, he was top goal scorer two seasons ago for the club. Um, you know, and he was scoring goals like Chandler. He must have been watching them videos back. Uh, so. No, score with his head. JJ didn't score his head. Oh, yeah. Oh, he scored, a, goals with his head, yeah. He scored a few. Back post. <laughs> like, a, like a salmon. I must have been a better manager than I thought. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we haven't got long left. Um, so if you want to get your messages in, please do send them uh, in now. And I'm sure Gary will oblige you on that. But um, we have got a, a, a picture of um, the book, which you will get with your purchase of your ticket to go along here. So there we go. Young Millsy. That's a handsome photo of that one. Was that, was that recent or a few years ago? You've got your contacts in there. <laughs> Gary, um, I can't kind of see you know you've got more hair than me, sunshine. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, well, I've got. I, I think I always have hair. It's just what the colour of it now, mate. That's yeah, the, uh, it uh, must uh, be woven in that. This, yeah, that, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> I've got I'm a question. Not, that's not pepper, yeah, pepper, pepper, they call it, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> Silver got a question. So one of my friends has asked us about this, and you know when you. I think Cluffy done a bit obscure things. You took the lads to the pictures one yeah. day. Yeah. Now we made us ask us, what's your did you did you go to any particular pictures or did you have a favourite one in the town? <laughs> the favourite cinema. Aye. Uh, well, favourite. No, I. I tell you what it was. I I I watched Ten Years a Slave. Yeah. Uh, I, I took my wife to watch Ten Years a Slave. Um, and I cried. I'm, I'm an emotional. I cry. I cry at everything on t TV. Unbelievable! Unbelievable! And what, what are you crying at now? You know, and what are you crying for? And Don't I, watch I, I long just, lost families. I just yes, exactly, <laughs> yeah. ex ex exactly. And 
I sat there and because it, it, it you know all these things happened and true and, and I said to my players um, they come in for training and I went we're going to, we're going to the movies and I think Marcus was like oh, where is this? we're going to go to the movies and I went we're going to the movies we're going together we're going to watch a film that I want you to to watch and I want you to really take in and and I think it does them good because a lot of them wouldn't go to the movies and watch that that, yeah. you know, the, 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 and it makes you realise, and, and for me, it's part of part of making you um, understand just how lucky you are um, and how you have to work at, you know, becoming that man who got back to his family uh, in 10 years a slave um, is nothing compared uh, sorry, is 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 unbelievable, you know, compared to what we're talking about, um, and you know, so I just wanted my players to see that, and then and, and then, you know, f I talk about that in my in my team talk, you know, I, I talk about that, and it's all relevant to to what I'm what what we, we're trying to achieve. So that's why I take them, you know, I don't take yeah. them to say, oh, we can't be asked to to train today. Um, so it was that film. It got me. It got me. It got me, and I wanted to get the players. So the next question is, what would you, what's your favourite food of choice while you're watching the pictures, or did you get it from outside? <laughs> I'm taking it in. I'm, I'm a tight get. I'm a tight get. I like getting like the sweets outside. Yeah. Not, not everyone's got green wood money. They they can't afford to buy the. <laughs> but listen, that, you know, it was you know again the chairman. I asked him to go to the movies. Yeah, and, you know the chairman pays us to go to the movies, and um, I love sweets. I'm I'm a I'm a unbelievable sweet man. Um, wine gums and Harry Bros. Uh, Harry, oh come on, I've had a bag tonight. <laughs> I, I, love, I, I love it, but uh, I'm also a big hot dog fan. I love hot dogs, um, so you know I love I love all that. There's something about even though it's expensive to go. It's, yeah, it's all part of it, isn't it? You know. Certainly is. Well, Gary, um, thank you very much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, we, we've thank wanted you. on for a long time. I'll take the memories of what you did at Gates into the grave. It was. I never thought I'd ever get to Wembley uh, with Gateshead, and it, it, it was a dream come true. The result wasn't what we wanted, but it'll always be there, and, I, and I'm eternally thankful. Thank you. Th listen, thank you very much. Thank you for having me on. And um, you know, I say I was there last weekend. I can't come. I can't wait to come back up again. Um, you know, and, and I'm so pleased speaking to you before. And I obviously look at how Gateshead are doing. I'm so pleased to hear they're doing really, really well. And let's hope they can get the sales up this season because um, they deserve to be. Certainly do. Well, thank you very right. much. And remember the 21st of November, um, I'd say it'll be advertised by the club as well. We'll push it on all our social media and on the podcast and the build-up. And um, I'm sure Gary will let you have them fantastic stories that he wouldn't tell us, the swine. Uh, so it should be a fantastic time. And um, let's say just uh, thank you very much. And remember everyone, like, subscribe, and we'll see you next week. Before you go, hold on. I want to yep. see you. A massive thank you to Gary, not only for coming on the show, for the football we had we witnessed, for you getting on the Evening Chronicles case and making a, a point of getting them to come down. You promoted the club. I'll be eternally grateful. And you don't have to apologise for losing that Wembley because it was a great day. And thank you. It was fantastic. And that's all as much smoke as I'm going to blow up your arse now. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I love on. you too. I love you. Too. I'll, I'll see you on November twenty-first, mate. Take care. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks, guys.